Hey, my name's Brian. I'm in a band called Tense. It's 5.18 in the morning and I'm on my way to meet up with my good friend John Collins, who you may know from the Bible Project. You may also know us. Uh, we're, our music is in the podcast. Uh, John and I are very old, dear friends and we've been through a lot together and we just thought we'd get together and take a stroll down memory lane and kind of tell our story and bring you along. Won't you join us? Sunshine. There you see. That's John. <laughs> this is the Laurel Thirst Public Market. Here it is on the corner of Gleason and 30th. John and I, fun fact, we used to be in a folk band and we would play shows here. He was the drummer and I was the uh, singer, guitar player. I remember being really proud. I, I worked over there. At the, it used to be called the Bakery Bar and we had a show across the street and I just remember wanting to like tell all the bakery people like hey I'm a show across the street if you want to check it out I'm in the rock band I really like how mad the crows are right now because we're flying a drone <laughs> Let's go. it's Portland's middle finger as you drive down Burnside it's Portland's flipping you off John and I met because we were doing a 48 hour film festival. So I was the composer, you were the editor? Uh, I was kind of producing it. I was a okay. producer. And that's when we met. And we had a good time. And then we did more stuff together. And we were both really early in our careers. John was a cow carning pastor. Hmm. <laughs> we, when we met, I probably was card counting. But I wasn't a pastor. He wasn't a pastor. I was. I wasn't working at a church at that time. But I. Uh, I learned to play blackjack with some friends. And uh, Rain Man style. And uh, <laughs> that's the style where you win <laughs> money. And uh, I actually helped pay for my learning uh, to do video editing and get a career in animation so while John was learning I was learning music production and we would like just commensurate and we would go to bars and stay in the bars until really late there's only so much time in a day you can spend like grinding and self-promoting and trying to get better at something before you lose your mind when you're not actually getting paid to do work and neither of us were getting paid to do work at that point we were just figuring stuff out so uh, we would share perspective and make fun of each other and encourage each other and it was a really great season. I always look back on it really fun. Um, I think what we should say about those early days was, um, was, was camaraderie, was a sense of grinding it out together, commiserating that we felt like we could do something special but we didn't know quite how to yet and not knowing if we ever would be able to and uh, I think that really sparked a great friendship it's true it was, I like I'm, I'm not tearing up from emotions right now it's the it's the snot it's the, it's the, snot. It's the cool air it was do or die and when you get more like successful or whatever, it's not do or die anymore. And, and it doesn't it's feel as doo -doo scary. Yeah, it's just or do. Or die, die. <laughs> oh man. That was in the air back then. It was really, uh, it was uh -huh. exciting and scary. Yeah, it's, let's make this happen. Yeah. This is, this is our moment. This is our time. Yeah. Down here is our time. It's our time down here. <laughs> Goonies. <laughs> oh, that is Goonies. Uh, we were both married. We were both kids with uh, kids' spouses pretending to be adults. 
in our early 20s. Yeah. What were you thinking? I mean, it worked out. For me, it was kind of like, I was kept. My wife had a good job. She's an executive assistant. Amy, who some of you know from the band. Sugar mama. And, uh, and I was kind of going through my teenhood, like, rebellion, angst, like, uh, grew up very uh, conservative, religious, and um, in my 20s was experiencing sort of a version of my own exile. And so, uh, so I had a lot of that I was also processing. You're saying you had a delayed adolescence. I did, yeah. I started adolescence at like, like around when I met you. You were you were in the center of my adolescence. Not biologically though. I was right on schedule. Just swimming through his adolescence. <laughs> Just. Do you want to set up a maybe like nice little time lapse right here? All right, let's do it. My, I started a company called Marmoset, John started Epiphio, and we both found ourselves kind of in the crazy trenches of this journey living. We became businessmen. We became businessmen. I'm always trying to get John to do weird projects with me, like right now. It's like, hey John, let's go for a walk and make a goofy video. And here we are. Let's make art together, John. Here we are. <laughs> this is art? You didn't know that? Oh. Are you going to get up and leave? I can't participate if this is going to be art. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we both started businesses, and then over time, have both actually exited those businesses. Um, That's true. Yeah, man, we've lived parallel lives. We have. At first, it was like a deadlock. He would have a big breakthrough, and then I would have a big breakthrough, yeah. and then. And remember would... what I would say every time you had a breakthrough? Yeah, remember the little people. I would always go to Brian. I'd say, Brian, remember the little. We both had our own little um, freelance shops. Um, Which was us as sole proprietors. Yeah. And that's a business of yeah. sorts. Um, I mean, it is a business. But then we both ended up partnering with other human beings and building a different type of business. Um, yours is Marmoset. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is a music licensing company. I made a video, uh, an explainer video shop um, called Epifeo, <laughs> and uh, we. Uh, so I felt like I got a crash course in what it really means to run a business. Did you feel that way, or did you just kind of let uh, other people deal with the businessy things? In the early years, so there was a period of time at Marmoset where later on, where I was kind of like a, almost like a silent partner. But before that, and when as Marmoset really started to scale, that was when I got in over my head and did not feel like I was getting, I was just crashing. I was not getting a course. I just, it became very clear to me. It wasn't a crash course, it was just a, a crash. Yeah, it became very clear to me that I just wanted to be an artist, not a, not a, um, not like a leader in the, in that sense, like running a business. But, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna mix up scenery now. Oh, it's magic. It's a new location. So I came from a small town, and in that small town, uh, I was a musician. And my friends sometimes that I was just like pals with would be like, we should play music together. And I'd always feel like, no, we sh after a while I would get together with them and then they wouldn't be good. And I'd be like, like I'm not an amazing musician, but I just have, I put a lot of time into it. There's people way more technical than me, whatever. Just like, you know, you want to jam with someone who has basic proficiency. And anytime anyone ever just like cold asked me to jam with them, they just almost never had basic proficiency. Um, they, they wouldn't have a good sense of rhythm or they would sing out of tune or whatever it was. So I, John would kept bugging me for years. He bugged me and finally I was like, oh, fine, we'll jam together. We jammed and I was like, oh, he's competent. He can keep a beat. And my wife was uh, wanting to play music and she was pretty, she hadn't, uh, didn't have a lot of experience at that time yet. You guys may know Amy if you've watched Tense videos. That's my wife. Um, she, so it was like perfect. I was like, I'll play 
music with my like one of my best buddies John Collins and he'll be on drums and my wife who's like still learning she'll be able to she'll have space to kind of learn because it's not going to be this really seasoned group of musicians or whatever and then it just we just had this really great like two or three year run yeah Charlie and Adam mm -hmm. and, and Liz uh, we put out an album yeah you put out an album you know we didn't really know a lot but it was like it was the height of the indie folk thing and um, we were not doing like obnoxious hipster anthems with whoop vocals and stuff. It was more understated and yeah. um, it was like a really special time. And we would go just play bars and our friends would fill the bars. We were in our 20s and most, none of us had kids. You know why I wanted to do it really bad? Was what? because uh, I worked with this guy named David and he's in a rock band in Seattle. I think they still play. Tennis? Tennis. Yeah. Tennis pro. Tennis pro. And... Um, and I asked him, we were on a work trip, by work I mean professional car counting, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and we were driving through the Midwest somewhere, and I asked him, why do you, why do you spend so much time playing in a band? Because they put out a number of records, and it's not like they ever like, made it big, but they just grinded it out. And he's like, well look man, I get out of the house, I get to see other shows, other acts, and I get free beer. I was like, that's a great idea. <laughs> and so, so amazing. John would get really bored when we were, because I would just write kind of spontaneously with everyone in the room. And John would be like, man, just tell me what to play. <laughs> <laughs> I was really distracted during that season. That's true, that was when you were stressed out. That's when, it, um, early epiphio. Yeah, that when my, my business exploded. And I just remember I would have my my phone on the floor tom, and like during a break I just kind of like scroll my emails because like it's just flooded with emails. <laughs> oh gosh, that was a crazy time. That was a crazy time. Um, I love that album. That's a good album. We did good. It's kind of lo-fi, but that's part of its charm. So now here we are. Now here we are. Stream. If you haven't got on the Spotify and listened to a tense jam, I don't know what to say. If you haven't got on the Spotify.com and typed in tense, and that's not like tense, like I'm feeling tense. It's like tense. Like, and you can even buy an album too, but... Listen, it's free on the Spotify, and I think Brian makes like one-tenth of a penny every time you listen to a song. So just keep that on repeat all night. That's what we want. You don't even have to listen. Just while you sleep, just repeat tent tracks. My favorite tense track. Is this one right here. <laughs> Feel that? Oh yeah, you hear that? <laughs> Just listen to tents. In your car, in your house, in a tent. Oh, you hear that? <laughs> Just letting it roll. Just letting it roll. That's great. That's great. Like Ender, when there's like titles, it's like click on the next video. <laughs> click on the next video.